Hey guys, what's going on? Um, Anthony Catacoli here, and I wanted to introduce to you guys today Warm Worship Pads. And what you just heard was one of the pads that come within this collection. And I think uh, we all know what song that comes from, and all we were missing was that really awesome guitar lick to kick in, and it would have made it all perfect. But yeah, so let me talk to you guys about Warm Worship Pads. Warm Worship Pads is um, actually it comes from the need that while I'm producing records, sometimes I'm on the road and I don't get to take a lot of my analog sense with me uh, when I travel to different countries or when I go to different studios. It's just kind of a hassle. And um, initially what I was thinking was I started sampling uh, my Prophet, my Sub 37, and even uh, sampling a Juno 106 that a friend of mine always loans to me whenever I need it. And um, kind of just get them so I can use them within Logic, use them within main stage for live performance, for studio recording. And um, when I started sampling it, uh, I thought, you know, how can I get the really warm sound of all these synths into this collection? And, um, well, one of the ideas that I had was what if I can get the sound of analog tape into these, uh, into these samples? So... Just to give you an idea what my signal chain was, I had uh, Rupert Neve Portico um, preamps coming in. And then after that, uh, after some EQ, uh, I would run it through also the Rupert Neve um, tape emulation um, 500 series racks. And these are really cool. I think that they really brought in a lot of the warmth of the analog side of it. Um, these were all uh, converted with uh, state-of-the-art uh, converters into digital. and I am super impressed with how this came out. So let me talk to you a little bit about the, the collection and then we'll just play through some of the sounds. Um, Warm Worship Pads is divided, if you look into here and main stage, into kind of three sets. So I have um, the Prophet 6 pads, and I'll talk to you a little bit about how I sampled those. The Sub 37 for Moog pads, and then we have the Juno pads, and then at the bottom just some multis where I kind of uh, combine um, just a few of these and then you know and make you know just a brand new sound so multis and um, so profit six pads uh, I figured out kind of a way to sample them in three ways so I'll give you an example so here's vintage pad I'm just gonna play it so there's vintage pad now, um, the Prophet, what you can do with it is that because it has six oscillators, you can use something that's called pan spread to just tell, okay, you know, slightly just pan to left and right um, alternately every um, oscillator that, that sounds. And so what I decided to do was uh, just make sure that we always had two oscillators on each side. So when you go to the, to the vintage wide, vintage pad wide version, now this is two oscillators at the same time. And it's going to sound a bit wider. So check it out. So you do the comparison of the, the regular vintage pad, it's kind of a bit more uh, focused, and then um, the other one is just really wide. Now the last thing I did was on the fat version, what I did was I didn't stop there with just having two oscillators all the time, always pan left and right. I said, what if we stack three on each side to a total of the six? So I did that, and this is what that sounds like. So just a bit bigger, um, you can also feel a volume change there, but it, it does sound a bit fatter. So you got three options of the same pad across any of the Prophet 6 pads. Now, coming into the Sub 37, um, so for example, I'll show you with this string pad. Once again, we have a mono synth that, that's been sampled. So once you sample it, you get the, you know, the stereo vibes. And um, through this... Uh, through this kind of setting where we have uh, the mono synth, I decided, you know, how can I make this sound a bit wider and a bit bigger? And then um, I came up with the idea of sampling it through the, the AMS Neve RMX 16 reverb, which was one of the really, really awesome and cool reverbs of the 80s. And it's what you hear like on, you know, lots of, you know, all the big 80s uh, soundtracks and stuff like that. 
And so um, going through that, it has this chorus effect that I thought sounded really awesome. And it really just opened it up. I wasn't looking for, for actual chorus. I was just looking for, for width. So uh, take a quick look at this and see how the modulation just wise it up. So here's the regular string pad. So there are all those uh, lo-fi vibes. And now let's check out the AMS string pad. So here it is. Oh yeah. Yeah, that is really cool. So you see how it just opens up. Um, and so I think this was kind of like a like a good trade off where I mean, I don't really feel like it's like a ton of modulation, but I do feel like it does have the sort of modulation that you would hear if we had two oscillators going on like a pan left and right. So um, I think it works and it sounds really awesome. Love those AMS presets. So that's with the Moog sub 37. And finally, we have the Juno pads. And so Juno kind of takes the same idea I did with uh, the Sub 37, except they have this really awesome Bucket Brigade chorus built into the unit. And so what I decided to do was just make a, a basic sound. And so whenever you see it by itself, like for example, Juno String Pad, um, Juno String Pad is just um, the string pad without the chorus engaged. So that's what that sounds like. There it is. Now, when you go to the version that says C1, I've engaged the C1 Bucket Brigade chorus on the unit. So that's what this sounds like. Okay, and then when you go to C2, same thing. I, it's only C2 engaged. So you have kind of like that under the water kind of chorus thing going on. You can also on the Juno combine C1 and C2 and just get something completely, completely crazy, which is this. And that's the sound that everybody wants from the Juno. No joke. And it's there. Um, besides that, I mean, these pads uh, are just really cool because it does have all of that analog vibe. You can hear it. You know, you can hear, you hear those preamps. You can hear some of that subtle distortion. I think, you know, this could be really awesome in your hands. If you're looking for, for all those analog vibes that you've always wanted in a single collection, this is the way to go. And I, I think that's really cool. We have the multis too. Um, I'll play uh, this one that's called Interstellar Organ. And so there, there's a pad that I have in the library that's called uh, Organ Pad. And it's just the Prophet, uh, the Prophet 6, you know, kind of emulating the sound of an organ. And so this is what this sounds like. And there's the, the reverb and the shimmer, which I was going to mention um, aside from all this. So there's reverb and there's shimmer in this guy. And uh, I really think that, um, that reverb and shimmer are just kind of something that we're always adding into our pads nowadays to play at church. Um, so basically the settings that you have on hand uh, right now are, uh, so we have the, the filter cut off. And that's what I've been using to kind of make the, the pad darker or brighter or make it feel like it evolves into something bigger. So something really cool for you to have on your performance. One of my favorite things to do. Um, I put in the attack and the release just because some of us want the pad to just kick in right away. Some of us want it to fade out longer 
or they just want to cut off right away. So you can go ahead and just do that right there. And then I have a reverb, which is uh, just uh, some of the stock logic stuff. And then a shimmer that I kind of just made up uh, on a channel strip. And, and you can do that with any pad. So let me go back to uh, Juno string pad with C1 and 2 engaged. Man, that thing sounds great. Okay. Like I haven't played it since I sampled it. And it's really awesome. So check it out. So here it is. Now let's bring in the reverb. I'm just going to dime it out. Bring in some shimmer. Now let's work with the cutoff. Man, you could score a movie with that. I think it sounds so good. That, that's why so many people like the Juno. And, and to think that that was historically a uh, beginner's synth, um, you can use this uh, you know, for just anything that you can think of. I created this so that I could have analog sound in my computer without having like a 50 gig library and just, you know, really useful sounds that you can even go in and, you know, you can go back into the EXS24 and then just kind of just resynthesize it to be anything that you want it to be. You don't need it to be a pad. I've turned some of these into leads over the over, over the course of a few days. I've turned some of these pads into bass synths. Some other ones I've turned into, you know, kind of like arpeggiating kind of things. And, you know, you can use these samples just about for anything that you want. So, yeah, this is warm worship pads and i really hope that you like this library and i hope that it's just really useful so um that's it for me today anthony caracoli signing out and thank you so much for watching if you like this product you can get it at multitracks.com if um if you have any questions you can ask them in the comments and then of course you know if you like this video please hit like if you don't like it then you know you can always hit that don't like button too which i would prefer you didn't and um, of course, you know, if you want to see more of this content, you want to be up to date whenever I bring out new products, which I'm going to be doing that a lot more frequently. You can guys go ahead and just follow my channel. And here's where you will always get the news before it actually happens. OK. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And you guys stay blessed.